You know, baby dedications remind us just how precious the gift of family is. And baby dedications also remind us how deeply God cares for each one of us, how important each one of us is to him. And we celebrate those children. We celebrate God's movement in each of our lives. You know, we've uh, been talking in a series here called Family Matters because we believe that family is God's idea. Anybody believe that family is God's idea? Family is an amazing, amazing thing, and family really does matter to God. Because it matters so much to God, it should also matter so much to us. We should value family and make it a priority in our lives, whether that's in our, our biological families or in the family that we have here as a tribe of people that are called to live according to God's way. God has invited us into his family. What an incredible promise. All throughout scripture in the New Testament, we see that God has adopted us into his family. What an amazing thing. You know, and it may not always be easy in families. Anybody else have some challenging family situations? I know I get those from time to time. But it's so important for us to recognize that even when family gets messy, that it's worth it. And the family still matters. So let's take a recap of what we've looked at. If you haven't been with us for the last couple of weeks, you've probably missed a couple of these messages. We looked at the family table. Anybody have a family dining table? Does anybody actually use a family dining table anymore? That's the question we ask because so often the family table is neglected, forgotten, or not really celebrated the way it used to be in culture here. And we just looked at the fact that the table is a symbol of our need to connect with one another, to honor and respect one another, and to make time for one another. We also looked at milestones. Is anybody here last week for our milestones talk, looking at what God commands us to do, and not just respecting each other's time, but actually celebrating one another. That's a huge thing in family. Be able to celebrate one another's achievements and the things that God is doing in each other's lives. You know, recognizing those milestones is so important. And recognizing as well that God is the source of all those good things in our lives. God is the source of all the blessings that we have. So we made that leap from just respecting one another to really celebrating one another. We've seen how God has chosen a family the family of Israel that we study all the time, to make his name known amongst all the peoples of the earth. And today I want to look at one of the important things that this family learned along the way. They learned that God was the one who set boundaries for them in territory and relationship. God was a God of setting the right boundaries, proper boundaries that protected them, that allowed them to grow and to thrive. They were a people set apart and given an incredible inheritance from God himself. And I want to say to you today, as we're adopted into his family, that each and every one of us has an incredible inheritance in Christ. You know, Isaiah talked about it today. You know, Melissa talked about it today. Every last one of us has a destiny and a calling of who we are to be in Jesus Christ. And we believe that with all of our hearts. And I want to say, not only do we have a destiny, each and every one of us, but we also have a destiny together as the people of God, as his family here at Word of Grace. He has specific things he's called us to do. And we want to continually strive for what his vision is for this church. Amen? Would you turn with me to Acts 17, please? We're going to start with a pretty amazing story uh, in the book of Acts. I love this because the apostle uh, Paul doesn't just um, come with you know, conviction that is his own, but he's actually in a setting here in, in the middle of Athens. He stands up in the middle of Athens. He's talking to the Athenian uh, men and women, and he's saying to them, look, I want to explain something to you. You see, the Athenians were always searching for answers. They were questioning cause and effect all the time. We, we've learned a lot in our culture from Greek culture. Then Athens was the seat of this. And Apostle Paul stands up and says something amazing to them because they had this thing marked, this, this special um, monument. And it just said, to an unknown God. And Paul says, I got an idea. I'm going to talk to you guys. I'm going to tell you what that means. Because they were saying, we don't know who this God is, but we've, we've heard about this other God that we don't know. You know, they had a pantheon full of gods. And Paul said, well, let me tell you about the one true God. And so we have this incredible story. And Paul says this to them, starting in verse 24, Acts 17, 24. We're going to read through 28. He says to them, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and doesn't live in temples built by hands. He's not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And catch this, he determined the times set for them, the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. 
For in him we live and move and have our being. If some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. This is an unbelievable story. Would you pray with me? Father God, we're thankful for your word. We're thankful for the fact that in you we live and move and have our being. We thank you, Lord, that you are the source of all good things in our lives. Thankful that we get to celebrate milestones like baby dedications together. We honor you today and we welcome you to come and be present in this place with us as we hear from your word. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you more and more. We don't want to just come to this book with our own concepts and ideas, but we pray that the author of this book that is your Holy Spirit, Lord, just come and illuminate our eyes as we, as we hear from your word today. Help us to understand this word as it takes root in our hearts, and we pray that it would bear much fruit in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Paul says, we are his offspring. We are his children. All throughout scripture, you know, it doesn't ever really talk about the fact of God's family. It doesn't give instruction for God's family, but all throughout scripture, we're referenced as his children. It's referenced that we're adopted into this incredible family. And all throughout scripture, we see example after example of how we're to live in that way. According to Paul, God deals in destiny. According to Paul, he has assigned a portion to each one of us. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows this, as Isaiah said, better than we know ourselves. And as, as his family, we have a delightful inheritance in him. David recognized this in the amazing Psalm 16. In verses 5 to 6, he says this. He said, Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. In God, we have a delightful inheritance. Amen? Can anybody give thanks to the Lord today for a delightful inheritance in him? We maybe, not have, we maybe haven't fully realized that yet, but we know that he has incredible things for us, and we're laying hold of that promise. But as we see over and over again as we study the word of God, it doesn't quite line up always with what we see in our culture, does it? We see it over and over again as we compare the word of God to what we're seeing in our culture. We see that our society doesn't always operate the way that God set it out to be. We live in an age of what I, what I like to call instant access and instant anxiety, right? Anybody else have a text message that just derails your day? You know, you get it and you're like, what do I do with this? <laughs> I can't think straight because somebody just took it upon themselves to invade my moment. <laughs> and you kind of can't. We live in a world of instant access and instant anxiety. You know, a text message can derail a day. An email you get might just erode your privacy. Social media, where is privacy anymore anyway, right? We live in a culture that doesn't respect boundaries. So how do we find balance and health for our families? And we believe that family matters so much to God. How do we find balance and health and raise children that are strong in the Lord in this world that we live in of instant access and instant anxiety? I believe that the key to this is understanding what boundaries are supposed to be like in our lives. How do we set boundaries? I believe it's such an important thing. I want to give you a few key thoughts about boundaries. But first of all, has anybody ever had a family member who clearly knows nothing about boundaries? Anybody? Yeah, okay, good. Now, look at your neighbor if you're sitting in a row full of your family. I see Bob Baravecki is terrified as to what Beck is thinking back there. You know, maybe they never stop talking and they just overwhelm you nonstop with their thoughts, and you're almost like, I don't even have my own thoughts anymore, I just have yours, right? You know, because we all need that silence in our lives to be able to, like, understand what we're feeling, but sometimes we have family members who take it upon themselves to tell us exactly what they're feeling at any moment. Or maybe they're, they're one of those family members who's just a, a personal space invader, you know? They, they just, you, you can't get away from them, they just follow you. They don't say anything, but they're just there, you know? And presence is an important thing. But sometimes we have some people who can, their presence alone makes us kind of like, okay, what are you doing, <laughs> right? You know, I've, I've had that in my life before. It's, and, and maybe they just sap up all of your time, you know, just someone who takes a lot of time. And the reality is we all feel within ourselves. We know that we need proper boundaries. We know that we need, <laughs> if you have any of these family members, you know exactly how important fa family boundaries are. And I want to give you a few thoughts about boundaries. The first is this, time is the most important boundary, the thing that we need to protect the most. Because it's the thing that we can't make more of, right? We might be able to make more money to try and bring health into our families, but we can't make more time. 
You know, time is so important. And as we looked at when we were talking about the family table, it's important for us to be making time for our family in a healthy way. It's important for us to recognize that time is such a valuable resource to us, and we need to have boundaries on our time. Does anybody else say you're busy? Does anybody else, how many times have you said to somebody this week, uh, I'm, I'm so busy? <laughs> you know, how many times have you, somebody asked you how you're doing and you responded to them and said, oh, I'm just busy. And if you're like me, you've, you've done that all week long. Because we're busy people. We've never had so many things drawing on our time as we do at this time in history. So many things. And I gotta be honest, today I'm preaching to myself with a lot of these boundaries. So if you find yourself incredibly busy, if you find yourself unable to make time for things that matter to you, you're in good company today. Eugene Peterson once said it like this. He said, busyness is a betrayal of the ministry. Okay? You know, he's talking to ministers. He said, busyness is a betrayal of the ministry. But catch this. You know, if we believe what it says in Scripture, that we are all ministers of the gospel, and we believe that our first ministry as people who are called according to his name is to our families, then busyness is a betrayal of the family as well. Busyness is a betrayal of the family. I'm not very good at saying no sometimes. I like to be able to do things for people who are in need, but sometimes we need to say no. It's the most important word that you can learn to say to protect your time. You know, you schedule those things which are most important to you. You know, that's what we've been learning in uh, Zahara's Bible study on Wednesday nights for us guys. We've been learning about some of these things that we can do to protect and find balance in our life as men. And one of those things is to schedule what we value and not let anything else supersede it. You know, focus on those things that are important rather than those things that are urgent. Because in an age of instant access, how many of you guys know that urgent things pop up all of the time, Right? It's so important that we choose to protect our time because busyness leads to burnout. Busyness leads to hardening of our hearts because when we say yes to absolutely everything, there's not enough of us to go around for every one of those things. We have no margin in our lives when those great opportunities, those great moments of God come into your life, those divine appointments happen. There's not enough of you to go around. We need that time. We need to do better at protecting it. So is anybody else brave enough to say they feel like they've hit the wall before, like me, and say, I just don't have time for anything? I've been there so many times, and I'm glad it's not just me. I want to say to you, you're in good company, because even Jesus understood the need that he had to protect his time, right? It says all throughout scripture in the gospels that he stole away to find time for the things which he valued. He stole away to find time for prayer and to seek the Lord as he was ministering to people. You know, could you imagine where we would be if Jesus never actually got to the cross because he was so busy, right? He knew he had a mission. He knew he was called by God and he sought time to protect those things which mattered most to him. Time is the only thing that we can't make more of, and we need to do a good job at respecting our time. We also need to be very, very wise in the way we set boundaries on space in our life. You know, more importantly in family, we need to respect each other's space a lot of times. See, some people are people people, and some people are not people people people. You understand what I mean? How many of you guys would say I'm a people person? Maybe you're an extrovert. How many of you guys would say, I'm not a people person, I'm an introvert? It doesn't mean you hate people, it just means you need your space, right? You see, I'm an extrovert. I love being around people. I can be around people 24 hours a day. But even I need my space, and if I were an introvert, I'd be like, please, people, just leave me alone sometimes. It's important that we recognize and respect each other's space because some people need that more than others. But let's not be the type of people to assume that we should always, in, you know, always have uh, an open door right? Let's not be the type of people to assume that at any one point in time, everybody is ready for that, because the reality is God has created us all differently, and some of us need some time alone from time to time. And sometimes we end up stepping on each other's air hose by invading each other's private moments. So we need to respect each other's space in the family. I came across this in Proverbs. Like I said, Proverbs is a book that convicts us a lot. Proverbs 25, 17, listen to this. It says, seldom set foot in your neighbor's house. Too much of you, and they will hate you. Okay, Isaiah, I hear you. What is, what is the, uh, the wisest man who ever lived? What is Solomon telling us when he says this? He's saying, 
Neighbors are a great thing. It's important that we make time for one another. It's also important that we don't invade each other's space too much, right? You know, it's important that we give each other that time because we believe that our most important time each day is that time we get with the Lord. How can we do that if we never leave each other alone, right? So it's important that we respect each other's space. We need to be honoring each other in this way as a family. So we've talked a lot about expectations this year, and we did a whole series about great expectations. We looked at how expectations we have for each other can really be, um, they can be things that challenge us, and they can also be things that burden us. You know, and as we respect each other's space, we need to respect the fact that our expectations on each other can be super draining sometimes. I want to remind you, don't let your expectations drain your families. Don't let your expectations become overbearing on each other. Make sure that you're doing those things. Make sure that you're challenging each other in a way that is leading us towards the callings that God has in our lives. You know, we live in this age of instant access and instant anxiety. It's a very consumerist age that we live in, right? You know, more than ever before, we're surrounded by advertising and marketing and things. You need this, you need that. You know, but I want to say this, when it comes to our interpersonal relationships in the family and in the family of God, we need to make sure that our consumerist culture isn't rubbing off on us. We need to make sure that we're not learning to treat each other as commodities. Because a lot of times it's tempting. I need something. I know somebody can fix it for me. I don't know what's happening in their life right now. I don't know what space they might need, but I need something. And since it's about me, I'm going to make it about me in this moment. That's how we burn each other out. That's not respecting each other's time or our own. That's not respecting each other's space. But that's how the world operates. Why do you think we all say all the time, oh, I'm just so busy? Right? We need better boundaries on the time and space for our families. I want to remind you today, even good things in our life without boundaries can turn into disasters, right? You know, we've looked at this incredible metaphor in scripture before of the river, the river of life, and how it flows, and everywhere it flows, it brings life. But I want to tell you, you know, as the church, as a body, we need to be in the river, but what happens when a river, what happens when a storm comes? It floods. What happens when a river overflows its boundaries, oversteps its boundaries? It can be quite a dangerous ordeal. You know, these things that are meant to bring life and do, they can also when they're not checked, when they're not kept in proper boundaries, they can bring a whole lot of headache and a whole lot of pain. So boundaries are so important. And I gotta be honest, I don't think any of you guys would disagree with that. Not a single one of you do I think would disagree with that statement that boundaries are so important. But the reality is this, that's not the full picture. More important than just seeing the fact that we need boundaries in our life is the question that we all need to answer of who is setting the boundaries in your life and mine. Who are we allowing to set the boundaries? Who's dictating where the lines fall? See, Paul said in Acts 17 that it is in him that we live and we move and we have our being. So let me ask you, as we've been talking about family members that maybe invade, who is setting the boundaries for you? Is it something that you're reactive or proactive with? You know, are you reacting all, you know, Somebody just, they sat in my chair on Sunday, that's unacceptable, I'm gonna make some boundaries, I'm gonna make some rules about that. And we're reacting to everything that upsets us and that's the way we're setting our boundaries. Is it us that's setting our boundaries? Maybe, you know, you're someone who loves just, you know, listening to the latest self-help guru that's out there in culture who's saying, this is the best way to live your life, this is how you schedule your time, those kind of things. Maybe you're listening to somebody like that as you're setting your boundaries. Maybe, you know, New Year's time comes around and you're like, hey, this year I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better at this. And you just, okay, I'll set my boundaries now. Maybe we need to consider who we're allowing to set the boundaries. Maybe you're actually just hoping that a pastor will come along and set boundaries for you. I want to tell you today that the only person who can set your boundary is God on your life. As we consider how he interacts with his chosen people, his family, We see all throughout scripture that he is setting the boundaries for them and showing them the way to move in him. He sets boundaries in territory. He sets boundaries for how they're to live in relationship. And each tribe, catch this, each tribe had a specific inheritance and a specific promise given to them and they had specific boundaries from the Lord. 
So I want to say to you that as we are the family of God, we need to let him set the boundaries for each of our families. We need to do it in prayer. It can't be something where we're just arbitrarily deciding based on the events of the day or what our culture is telling us. No, we have to be so intentional with this. And we need to be intentional about seeking his face for the boundaries that we're setting. Because your family, I believe this with all my heart, has a specific inheritance from God. Your family has a specific calling in God. And it's important that we take hold of that by letting him set the boundaries. So together as a tribe, we also have a specific destiny. I believe he staked out a portion for us as well that we need to rise up and move towards. You know, sometimes we're tempted to draw our own territory on the map, aren't we? God, I just like this. And I know in order to get there, I got to say no to these things. But, you know, it's not just about my decision. It's about God's decision. Each one of us has the drive in us to choose our own destiny. And that's reinforced by culture every day. It's all about you. You know, make sure you're looking out for number one, right? It's everywhere in culture. But I'll tell you this. If we don't decide to set our own boundaries, if we're not the ones who are kind of doing that and culture's not doing it, then God is the only one who can do it. But if we don't let God do it, then it will always fall to us or to culture to dictate where we start and where we end as a family. When anybody but God is setting the boundaries in your life, the protection around you and your family, we're limiting him and what he wants to see us grow into. Because boundaries are a healthy thing. God is constantly encouraging his people to dream bigger as well. This is what I love about it. You know, the fact is, I think that a lot of us think, oh, if we, if we come to God sometimes and we let him draw new boundaries for us, it's going to put us in a little box. And, you know, I'm, I'm scared to give all of my trust over to him in that because I don't know if I like the destiny. If we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, is that going to mean that I have to stop hanging out with these friends and all these things? And sometimes we're scared to give up control. But God never wants to limit your life. He wants to see it go to a new level. And setting proper boundaries is how we get there. It's part of the process. Allowing him to dictate where we start and end in our families is a huge part of that. And I want to encourage you today to understand that when we let the Lord set the boundaries of our lives around our families and around this family, when we give it to him and prayerfully allow him to see what that looks like, we go to new heights with him. Isaiah 54 is one of my favorite passages of Scripture, and we visited it a few times this year already. Isaiah 54, verses 2 and 3. If you have it, we're going to read in just a second. It says this. It says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. This is God's dream for his people. This is a proclamation he made over his people. He's saying, look, we're going to move forward together and I'm going to set the pace and the boundaries, but I want you to constantly be moving with me to expand that territory I'm giving to you because your inheritance is a great one. Lengthen and strengthen. I love it. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes because God is giving you a larger inheritance. What is God saying to us? He's saying, as we move with him, And as we let him be the one to dictate the boundaries of our lives, he's saying, buckle up because we're going to go to a new level together. How many of you guys are ready to go to a new level in God? How many of you guys want to go to a new level in your family life? Some of you guys might remember in the year 2000, you know, almost two decades ago now, scary, um, there was a book that kind of caught a lot of buzz called The Prayer of Jabez. Anybody remember the book The Prayer of Jabez? I love it. A a man took a a very tiny passage of scripture, two verses in 1 Chronicles about a character that we basically never hear about. And um, it's an incredible little snippet. In the middle of this long genealogy, the author stops to talk about this man who prayed a specific prayer. And he says this in 1 Chronicles 4.10. It says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I might not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. You know, giving up control to the Lord in our lives and allowing him to determine what we do with our families, what it's important to say yes to and no to in our families, giving him that place in our lives of honor doesn't mean that we should ever stop asking him for more. 
He longs to have us ask him for more. It even says, you know, in scripture, in John 14, 14, it says, Jesus invites, he says, ask anything in my name and it will be given to you. He is looking for us to bring our desires to him for what we want to see happen in our families. He's looking for us to continually ask. C.S. Lewis put it like this. He called them the unblushing promises of the gospel for you and I. Unblushing meaning they're not ashamed of it. Sometimes we feel like when we're asking God for big things, you know, we're, you know, I shouldn't ask God for that. That's a bit selfish. God believes in so much more for you than you could ever believe in for yourself. And today I think we need to recognize that letting him set boundaries in our life, coming to him and letting him be the one who is Lord and ruler over our families doesn't mean that we're going to be decreasing but increasing. It doesn't mean there's going to be limits set. It means that you're going to be limitless in him. And God wants to take us to a place where we're limitless in him because God is a boundless God. There's no boundaries on him at all. He can do exceedingly, abundantly above anything we ask or think, it says in Ephesians. He's a God of much more. And those unblushing promises of scripture are ones that we need to lay hold of. You see, we need boundaries in our lives. We know this. They're healthy for us and our families. Boundaries are healthy for this family of God here a word of grace. We need a healthy balance, but I got to tell you, in our hands alone, we tend to make a mess of the boundary lines. At best, sometimes they call us to withdraw. Oh, you know what? I can't serve because I don't have enough time. Well, maybe God is going to lead you to make time in a new way. You know, maybe in our hands alone, a lot of times in the, in the hands of the church alone, boundaries just look like what we call legalism. Boundaries without God leading them is legalism. It doesn't lead us to each other, it leads us from each other. But in the hands of God, the amazing thing is that all the boundaries and the way that he puts things in order is for our prosperity. And I believe that with all my heart. You see, we we have to set the boundaries from the right source. So who is setting your boundaries today? Who are you allowing to draw the territory that your family will occupy Who are you allowing to determine the destiny that you are going to walk in? As individuals and our individual families and collectively here, I think it's so important for us to consider who draws the boundaries. Because God in his loving way always wants to give us his grace. You know, we're called word of grace. We focus a lot on his grace. Grace is simply that. Grace is simply God coming and saying, look, you didn't inherit this land from anybody but me. And I believe that the destiny that we have as a community in God is going to be one that is achieved by following where his grace leads. And that's because we're going to give him the right to determine our boundaries as well. It's not just about avoiding busyness, but allowing God the room to grow us in the way that he's chosen. It's not just about avoiding people who suck up all our time and maybe invade our space too much, but about making space for relationships where God has placed us to make a difference. In our families, we need to prayerfully set the boundaries with him as he leads. You know, the number one thing that we can do to set healthy boundaries for our families is to pray. We need to pray more. We need to trust him. We need to invite him more to lead us in that. And the number one thing that we can do, I love it, we gave each one of these couples a book called Praying Circles Around Your Children. It's so important that we recognize that he is the one who sets our boundaries and as we pray and invite him to do that, it's his protection that we need that's gonna allow us to go to the next level together. As the tribe of word of grace, I want to say to you today, we are constantly and always going to allow him to be the one who sets our, our boundaries. We are constantly going to be led where his grace is leading. Sometimes that means we're not going to do everything. But that means we are absolutely going to follow where he leads. Amen? Amen? All right, as we close, would you just close your eyes with me for just a minute? I want to ask some questions. You know, throughout our Family Matters series, We've been looking at a lot of things, and maybe something's caught your eye. Maybe something even today has, has just pulled at your heart as we talked about setting proper boundaries in our lives. Maybe you guys know, one of you knows that, you know, I haven't set good boundaries in my life, and it's wearing me out. Whether that's boundaries on your time or on your space with each other, you know you want to see healthier boundaries in your family. Or maybe you feel like, you've actually stepped over some boundaries in the lives of your family members, your friends, or this, this church even, 
And too often you've allowed yourself to place your needs above the needs of others. Um, you know, maybe God has you here and shown you that you've been drawing all the lines on the maps without him. You haven't let him set any of your boundaries. You know, if you feel in any way that, that God is talking to you about the boundaries that you have in your life with others and you want to just respond to him, I just invite you as nobody's looking around, as we all have our, our heads bowed and our eyes closed, would you just shoot your hand up really quick? If you're saying, God, I need to adjust my boundaries. In a positive way, maybe you need to step back from some things or maybe you need to step forward into some things, into some destiny. Okay, there's hands all over the place. That's great. It's a constant thing, you know, to walk with him and to continually ask him to lead in that way. Well, in a moment we're going to pray, but I, I want us to just take this step together. If, if that's you and you're still feeling that, you haven't raised your hand yet, I'd invite you just to take a, a physical step. Just raise your hand and say, God, I need you to help be the one. Amen. Amen. Or maybe you're here and you've been trying to do it all on your own for so long and it's exhausting you. And you recognize that You've never asked Jesus to come into your life and be the one to set your boundaries. You've never been given the opportunity, maybe. And you want to say, God, I know that I can't make sense of this without you. I need you to be the one who sets my boundaries. You've heard us singing, talking about a God who cares so deeply for us and for his people and adopts them as sons and daughters. And you know you want that relationship with him like never before. Maybe you want to do it for the first time. Maybe you want to rededicate to finding that relationship and making it your first priority. And if that's you today, I want you to raise your hand as well. Amen, amen, emphatic hand raising. Amen. Rededicating your life to him. Choosing him for the first time. I can promise you this. When you choose to say yes to Jesus and let him be the one who leads in your life, you're never going to regret it, but it's going to be a decision which brings health into your body, into your family, into everything. So I want us to just pray a prayer together. If this is your first time praying this, this is just a simple prayer, which is a reaction of our heart to what God's been saying. And for all of you who are praying this prayer for the first time, just know that God is so excited by this moment, by you choosing to put him first in your life. I'm going to say a line, and would you just all repeat after me? Would everybody repeat this together? Just say, Jesus, I need you. I've been trying on my own too long and I know I can't do it myself. I know I've messed things up a lot and I'm sorry that I've tried my own way so often. I believe that you died for me and that God raised you back to life and that I can have life like that. So I give you my trust. I ask you to come lift my burdens. Come be the leader of my life. Come be the one who sets the boundaries and help me to push those boundaries in you, seeking your destiny in its fullness for me. Jesus, I am all in on you. And I love you. Amen, amen. And God, I just thank you so much for our congregation, for the incredible tribe that you've put together. I want everybody to stand really quick and just take the hand of your neighbor. Let's all just grab hands and fill in these aisles. Let's pray a prayer together as a family, amen? Let's take just 20 seconds and just begin to pray for the one on your left and the one on your right. Just pray for their families. Just begin to pray even now. Pray for health to come into their bodies. Pray for health to come into their families. Pray for their relationships, their jobs. Pray that God would build good margin into their lives and proper boundaries for, for them. Lord, just pray that they would just have this destiny in God, that they would see it clearly, that as they walk with him, that he would open doors, that no man can shut for them, that as they give over permission for him to set the boundaries in their life, that he would do a miracle for them. Let's just pray for 30 more seconds for one another. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you are not leaving us alone that you walk with us in everything that we do. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one who knows everything about us, even the amount of hairs on our head, Lord God, that you knit us together in our mother's womb and you had a plan and a destiny for each one of us before we were even born. And God, we give you the right and the permission in our lives over our families, over this family, that you could be the one to set the pace, God. We give you that place in our life. We give you permission, Father, and we submit to your leading and your authority. We pray, Lord God, for fresh 
anointing to come on fathers and mothers and, and family leaders, Lord God, that they would lead with courage in the ways that you have marked out, that they would prayerfully be considerate of what exactly you would have them to do as leaders of their families. And we pray for all of those who lead in this family, God, who are serving in this family, who have made word of grace their church home. God, we just pray that you would help them, Lord, to recognize your place in this place as our leader as our counselor and our comforter, Holy Spirit. We know that you are. And God, prayerfully, we ask that you would continue to lead this, this community. We pray for each and every family represented here. And we pray your best over their lives. God, by your Holy Spirit, begin to move in their lives. Begin to put families back together where offenses have been committed, where boundaries have been overstepped. Begin to put margin in their lives for those incredible times walking with you. Begin, Lord God, to pour out a double portion on every family here for your best in their lives. Set amazing boundaries, God, that exceed our expectations as only you can. We pray for exceedingly abundantly above in every family that is represented here. We pray for a great territory that this tribe is occupying. And we trust you, God, we know that you're a good father, that everything good that we have has come from you. And God, we can't believe where you've brought us, but we know that you're not done yet. And so we lengthen our cords. We strengthen our stakes. We choose to let you set the pace, but God, we're moving forward with you and we're ready to move. And if you believe it in Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Bless you guys.